hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My throat sounded a bit croaky or my voice rather just then anyway um, welcome to this <sighs> yawny sleep session so this is a ball let me bore you to sleep only listen to this or watch it on YouTube or on my website when you can safely close your eyes because I don't know about you but I generally have my eyes closed when I sleep I know some people don't but uh, generally I think sharks are one of the few animals that have their eyes open all the time when they sleep maybe caterpillars as well I don't know and uh, or did I say animals I mean fish sharks are I suppose lots of fish including sharks have their uh, eyes open yeah so whales as well maybe those big fish yeah so I was going to say fish because sharks are fish because they've got gills aren't they yeah <sighs> little elephants so I was going to say what the whole point of this is it's just me talking about absolutely nothing for an amount of time usually the sessions last about an hour ish but um, I'm not sure if I'm going to talk for that long oh, I feel like I could actually go to sleep myself Andre is in the bedroom asleep on my bed and um, for some reason he started doing that again he hasn't slept on my bed for months until the last week and he's on there nearly every day so I don't really know what it is or why but he seems to really like it in there during the winter he's on the bed underneath the covers you know quite a lot so this is uh, who knows what's going on with him but it's very comfy it's a comfortable bed and he likes comfort he really does love comfort so uh, if he gets to stretch out as well because he's got quite a long body well it's not as long as mine but you know it's he likes to just stretch right out and sleep like that and he can't do that in any of the other places that he sleeps because in his cage he's got a hammock he can't really stretch out in that because it's more of a square hammock than a, a long hammock I mean I think he has a lot of comfortable there's a comfortable sleep there but he can't stretch his body he's got a, a big round it's actually a, like a cat scratcher um, with a a space underneath 
I'm not really describing it very well, but he sleeps in there anyway quite a lot. And he's got his bag. So he's got this green bag that he sleeps in, green and brown bag, bag, bag that he sleeps in. Again, he doesn't. I don't think he really gets to stretch out. So maybe that's what he likes. He likes a chance to stretch out and not have anything on top of him, you know, just to be free. Apart from the ceiling, but that's quite high up. I don't. I can't imagine he can even see the ceiling. His eyesight isn't great, and um, doesn't have to be. I suppose you don't need to duck. You know, if you're three foot tall, you never need to duck to get through doors. You no need to watch out for your head banging your head on the top of the wind of the door frame. So I guess it's just one of those things you don't really take much notice of. So being a ferret, sleeping on a big bed, outstretched, with a high ceiling, it's very much like being three foot tall, walking through doors. Not quite sure how the uh, those quite bridge. So as I said, uh, just the main point really about these recordings is I just talk and I'm probably going to talk about a little bit about what's been going on for me the last week or two weeks so I haven't actually recorded anything for over a week I think uh, I do lose track but I think it's got to be about a week and it seems absolutely ages I don't know it's weird isn't it I mean a week isn't a long time unless you're you know, standing on a nail or something of course it's a long time then or stuck in a lift or elevator I've got your foot stuck down the toilet you know I'm just saying it's, it can be a long time obviously a, a week I mean just generally though it's not a huge amount of time really to go without making a recording by the way that's Andre in the background he's he's arisen from his bed or from my bed actually my bed he's got one, two, three, four, four places that he sleeps, other than my bed, five including my bed, six actually, because he sleeps in my dirty, <laughs> and it sounds gross, but I've got a pile of dirty laundry on the floor, and he's, at the moment he's not doing it, but in the winter he sleeps in there, so he like crawls right up, right in the middle of it, and just... I don't know where he is sometimes, he just hides. But he's not hiding, he's just sleeping. I guess it's keeping him warm. So he's got quite a few different places he sleeps. Oh, he's also, he's got a couple of carrier bags that he sleeps in as well. So there's probably about eight, eight different places. And now he's the other side of the room eating his dinner which is cat food and give you an idea how how fussy he is he won't he refuses refuses to eat cat food that's got jelly in it he only will only eat cat food that's got gravy with it that's mixed with gravy refuses to eat jelly now, most cat foods come with jelly amazing is this how fussy he is but he absolutely loves the cat food 
but he also has dry favorite food as well which is really good for his teeth and you know gives him like some of the other vitamins and stuff that he needs and he's always got water plenty of water available for him to drink all the time he's got three different places he can get water from but he's having a right old munch he's enjoying his dinner he also loves chocolate but I kind of I've stopped giving him chocolate because it's no good for him it's not good for his stomach but he loves to taste but it upsets his stomach and that's I can see, I can see the results of his upset stomach but I can't feel the results so I don't know if it's causing him pain in his stomach and I thought about that recently and if it is giving him stomach pains or heartburn or any of those things then I don't yeah I don't want that to happen and he can't tell me can he so um, I've stopped giving him not that I didn't used to give him like big bars of chocolate you know I didn't turn up and just give him a, a whole Easter egg to eat I might have done that when he was a baby just for fun but uh, you know I used to give him pretty much anything he wanted when he was tiny just to see what he'd do with it I used to give him bananas I remember when he was really little I mean I'm talking well he's three years old now and so I've had him it's August the 4th or 5th or something like that I think it was the 1st of August on Monday now wow in probably nearly a week into August nearly I don't know why he's making so much noise. He's probably looking for little bits of food that might have dropped on the carpet. Yeah, I think he is. No, oh, he's just laying there. So he's three years old, pretty much now. I got him in September, three years ago and he was about five weeks old when I got him and including his tail he was pretty much the size of his head you know including every, you know, the whole body and everything and the tail so he was tiny you know, he fitted in the palm of my hand and he was very little now he's fully grown and Still, in some ways, he's probably cuter now than he was when he was a baby. It's just that face. I just fell in love with his face. He's got this just cutest little face ever. And um, so I've had him for three years, nearly. Sort of another month, and it'll be three years that I've had him. So he'll have been born around probably sometime. I don't remember the exact date I got him, so it was in August sometime. So he may have already been born by now, three years ago. And when I first got him, is I actually so got a friend who's also got got one, and he said to me that the person, I think it's possibly the same mother, possibly. Or who I don't know. It was, it was a a blood relative anyway of the one that my friends got. Um, so Andre's related, and his friend who breeds them said that uh, he said that his friends got two that needed to be taken. Really needed to be given a home. And it was two boys, and they were brothers, and. I thought about it 
I had a brand new carpet. I say brand new, I'm out here. I'd had it since, what, May? So that's what, four months, but it was still, you know, really good condition and everything in the flat was pretty much, you know, good condition and everything. And I thought, uh, did I really want the responsibility and could I be bothered really? Part of me thought, yeah, and then part of me thought, nah. I'd already thought about getting a dog, but a little dog. I'd actually gone to the council, well, I'd contacted the council, the local council, who are my uh, landlord or landlady, you know, they're in charge of my home. Well, I'm in charge of the home, but they own it and they rent it to me. And I said, well, I'd quite like to have a dog for therapeutic reasons, really. Company and just maybe to help me emotionally and help me, you know, give me something that's missing from my life. Maybe give me a reason to get out of bed on those times that I don't feel feel the need, you know, get me out of bed to take the dog for a walk and oh, my back's itchy and um, so the lady on the phone at the council said it's okay, you can have a dog as long as it's a small dog and you don't take it out into the communal garden and you make sure the dog does not disturb your neighbours with barking and things like that. I thought, well, fair enough. I don't. If I did get a dog, I'd never. I never wanted a big dog anyway. I'm more a more lap dog person, really. Just a you know, a little a little dog with a pink bow, and you know. That's the kind of dog that I would go for anyway, just a little thing. Just uh, just just someone to love really, isn't it? I'm not in I don't need didn't feel the need to walk around with a a, a dangerous looking dog. I don't really have that. Not really never really appealed to me. And even sort of dogs like Alsatians and um, big, big dogs just don't. Well, apart from the fact that it just be knocking stuff over. I mean, when I was just, when I was a kid. When I was when I was a kid, when I was a kid, uh, my family got a Saint Bernard puppy, and it was little, tiniest little thing. It was probably probably a bit bigger than Andre but when it was you know when it first came to us but it was puppy size tiny little thing and it grew and it grew and it grew and it just became absolutely massive um, still the biggest dog I've ever seen to this day just it was absolutely it weighed, it was taller than me and it weighed more than me and just couldn't couldn't take it for a walk because it was too heavy it was too big, too strong Just was just just not practical at all and they need a lot of attention rightly so, they should get lots of attention they're beautiful and I think if you if, Really, if you have a dog, you need to be able to, or any kind of animal or children or whatever, you, you have to be able to be spend time with them because otherwise there's no point in having them, is there? I suppose. So I thought, as I wasn't working, I could get a dog, spend time with the dog, but also I needed an animal that could be left on its own for periods of time. Uh, if I ever do, you know, if I manage to get myself a job, 
in the future or I want to need to go away for the weekend or for you know need to go to do something I needed a dog that would be able to be left alone without barking and uh, inviting friends around to play poker and you know having parties raves things like that and uh, so causing trouble for the neighbors so I had to be careful there so I went to the well first of all I went and spoke to a neighbor and and said oh, I'm thinking of getting a dog but it's only be a little one it won't be bark you know I'll get one that's quiet and the neighbor looked at me like I just I, I felt I was being looked at like I was like she'd answered the door and I was sitting on a, a toilet you know like I just dragged the toilet downstairs you know unblocked it unch you know unconnected it from my own bathroom dragged it down and just sat down and was just going to the toilet waiting for her to answer the door that's kind of the kind of look so I didn't I guess that that person wasn't particularly into the idea of me having a dog which I do understand from a sense of I've had neighbours with dogs that have been barking all the time and it's just it can get it's it's not not nice but I had this idea I kind of thought you know I'm a quiet person and I can't imagine any animal that I had that would be noisy I imagine all animals any you know if I had a dog um, even if I had a hyena or a lion it wouldn't so much roar just uh, you know, a lion would probably just purr before eating me you know so it's it's kind of I think if you're quiet uh, you know it's like if you're a quiet person then it's, you know, if you're shouting all the time, then other members of the family that maybe you raise may also become shouty. So, you know, we're all affected by what we're around, aren't we? It's just sort of standard stuff, I suppose. And so I went to the, it was an animal shelter sort of place, you know, where they've uh, a rescue centre. And... I had a look around, funny enough there was a big St Bernard which they couldn't give, they wouldn't even let anyone have because it needed to stay there because of problems it had, I don't know what it was but it just brought back a few memories. I just don't like seeing animals in cages, not especially like dogs and stuff, that's why I'd never I know I put Andre in a cage, but it's a big cage for him. It's only at night when, when I'm in bed and I put him in there. He's got food, water. He can't run around in there really, but he, you know, it's a it's a much bigger than I think the average person, the average person, the average uh, ferret would have. I mean, there's oh, one, two four levels to it, four levels and there's two places he can sleep or three because sometimes he sleeps on one of the other landings there's no elevator or lift there or a staircase why would there be a stair but there is kind of like a staircase but it's not it's uh, there's like one, two three, four, four different ramps that he can climb up to get to each level. Plus there's the hammock and there's also a, another big uh, sheltered thing that he can climb in and sleep in. It's like a, like a nest kind of thing but I'm probably not describing it very well but 
I'll be honest with you, I'm not trying really to put a lot of effort in describing it. It's, it's brown, it's made of a fabric and there's a hole in it where he can get in. And in the winter he spends quite a lot of time in there. So as far as when I wake up and I come to like, you know, open the door and say good morning to him, quite often he's in there. But during the summer, I don't think he goes in there at all. He seems to always be in the hammock. Right, so I went to this animal rescue centre. It's in Essex, I forget where it is. Um, it's not a long way away from where I live. I think it's possibly two bus journeys. And there is a, on the way there, there's this river. I don't know what the river is. It even seemed like there was sort of like a little beach there as well. So it looks quite nice, like a nice little area. So I went there on my own, I think the first time. And I asked to see no, actually, yeah, I went on the on the internet onto their website first and saw a, a couple of dogs that were there. One was a not a Shih Tzu. It was uh, Pommy 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 Dollar or Pommy Pomerang or Pompain or something. I forget. It was a little little cute little thing, big eyes. They, they need a lot of uh, grooming as well so I think it costs quite a bit to keep them nice because of their hair they have very beautiful dogs and so I went there and I thought I'll have a look at it was a, it was a little boy, it was a puppy I forget what his name was now anyway I went and saw him and I had a look at the other animals and stuff decided against getting a chicken and a rooster seemed like perhaps the wrong thing you know as far as the noise level goes and didn't have any elephants so I just had a look at the different animals they had lots of little things running around they had horses uh, ponies what other animals did they have? They had... I don't think they had any... Although I didn't look, but I'm pretty sure they didn't have any ferrets or anything like that. Because I probably would have noticed that. I probably would have had a look just out of interest. I'm pretty sure there wasn't. There was lots of dogs though. Lots of dogs. Some dogs which were kept separate from the others that were, you know, adult dogs. And then there was in the actual building where I think the lady that runs the place lived. She had loads of dogs running around together. And there was these puppies. Misty, is it Misty? No, it wouldn't be Misty. I think Misty was the name of the St. Bernard. Wow. Anyway, I um, I went and saw the dog. I said, can I have a look? And they brought out the little dog for me. And it was quite weird because the, the dog that was available, because it, it was the only one out of those two dogs, there was two brothers and sisters or whatever. One was already... Um, had a family potentially to go to and the other one hadn't and you know I had this idea really had this idea that if I ever got myself a puppy for me for myself I've lived in places with dogs but never kind of had my own never been like a, a daddy to a dog you know 
And I thought if I ever did go to like a rescue place or uh, go and see a litter of, of little puppies, the, the one that ran up to me and, you know, the, the, the dog would choose me. That was my kind of idea, that the dog would choose me. I wouldn't choose him or her, but they would choose me. Uh, and that would be, then I'd know that was the right, right one to take home but this this puppy looked at me like I was I just dragged that same toilet that I'd sat on at my neighbour's front door dragged it with me by a big chain took it on the bus travelled all the way there dragged it maybe went for a swim and pulled it out dried it off and then you know, dragged it all the way through the through the park and through the farm, and then sat down on it and started going to the toilet as the dogs were introduced to me, and it didn't come anywhere near me. And that I sort of burst a little bubble. I wasn't blowing bubbles. I didn't have like hubba bubba. I wasn't blowing a might not fill my mouth. <laughs> no, there was no, no bubble farts going on. So I just, I felt a little bit disappointed, you know. Just thought, oh, it's my little fantasy gone. I really thought that the puppy would be all excited to see me and jump up. It'd be like a little Disney movie, a Disney moment, you know. It'd jump up and start licking me and and I'd know that I had a, like a bond created for life but it wasn't it didn't happen that way but I still thought oh it's just it didn't stop me I still thought yeah you know it's it, you know the dogs that I think the history with the little puppies was that the the owner had the dog dog got pregnant had the babies and the owner was too elderly couldn't look after them all so she had to let all of the dogs go and then and she went into a like a residential home or something like that I might have partly made that up I'm sure the um, the person in charge of this animal rescue centre did tell me but as I told you, I was busy, I was on the toilet, so I couldn't perhaps listen to everything that was being said. I wasn't really on the toilet. So I thought about it and I I left. Got back on the bus, went home. Had a few funny looks, but you know, standard. And I went back again, I took a friend. Well, I didn't take a friend, I didn't take her with me I mean she's an adult she came with me she we travelled together neither of us she didn't take me I didn't take her you know it wasn't um, she's not my care worker she's, she's just a friend so we travelled to this place that she'd been to before I think that's where she gets her rescue dogs from because she's had a few over the years so I went there and we went and had another sort of meet of the dog. This time I got a chance to take the, the little puppy for a walk like around the grounds. Did not want to have anything to do with me. Liked her, my friend, but didn't want anything to do with me. Which was just Pomeranian. That's it, it was a Pomeranian. And... I suppose I was a little bit disappointed. I really thought that... I know logically, you know, obviously this puppy was... had connections with all these other dogs and was probably happy living there with, you know, another like 20 dogs running around and playing with each other. They'd probably be much happier being there than 
living on its own in a house with someone but you know, they can't afford to feed and to keep all those dogs they're there you know, for a short time until they get found a home so I you know I left and I said oh, I'll let you know I'm very interested which I was especially as it was it was a little it was seemed quite quiet but I kept going online and trying to research whether or not they're noisy they can be and apparently according to the internet they can be very barky at times which wouldn't necessarily bother me but if it's going to affect my the equilibrium between me and neighbours then I need to you know think of that first before because I knew that once once I got the puppy and he lived here with me I wouldn't want to let him go and you know if he started being noisy and making lots of puppy noises and you know dog barking and stuff it could cause problems you know so I didn't want to put myself into that position so in the end I decided against getting him and he was he had another family that wanted him as well so it was it was okay so he he went to a he went to a, a happy home which is good so this was kind of in the probably July August time and then my friend said you know about these two little ferrets that were available and did I want one and, I, and he said you, you, you can have a cage and everything you know so it wouldn't cost me anything it wouldn't cost me anything to buy the ferret it was free if you know they just wanted me they wanted him to have a you know a happy safe home and I thought about it I thought it'd be cool but then I you know really kind of hummed and hard and uh, when I say that I didn't actually go hum and ha hmm hum ha I didn't actually do those sounds but I did uh, evaluate the various options concerning introducing a little fairy ferret into my home and I kind of came to this, the decision no that was my decision and I said no I said thank you but no I'm not going to I'm not ready for the responsibility and uh, so I decided not to so I think I went into town you know a few weeks later or a couple of weeks later a week later whatever went into town I'm just walking back from the bus stop walking down my road towards where I live and there was my neighbour my friend And he had a cage. No, he didn't. No, he's they were holding these two little things. And so, what's that? And um, I think they might have had a cage. I forget. Anyway, they. I just wanted to meet them because he said, "Oh, I've got two little ferrets, two baby ferrets here." So I sort of kind of come and meet them because I was intrigued, really. And this, the bloke that had. Uh, that breeds them said yeah come in he introduced them to me and there was two so they were both brothers and I just fell in love with Andre I don't know what it was I don't even know what it was about him if it was his face um, and I remember I picked him up and he bit me 
first thing he did was bite me and when I say bite me I don't mean nip I'm talking clamp biting really hard bite and I think it was I just fell in, I fell in love with him and I don't know why I just don't know what it was and there was no difference really between the two of them they looked different but there was something about Andre that just that I just had feelings for him straight away just really and it was also the something about the fact that he he wanted to destroy me and, and bite a hole in my hand and he didn't like me at all and that was um, maybe it was a challenge I don't know but it was probably one of the most exciting days I've had for a long time getting him you know it's uh, better than any birthday or Christmas present I've ever had so the other ferret was going to another person, another friend, because they um, uh, they decided another friend decided he wanted him. So I brought both of them upstairs here overnight just to look after both of them, just for the night. And they did not stop fighting the whole night. They ran around the flat and they destroyed everything. And they were fighting and they were screaming and they were making all sorts of noises all night long. And all I was concerned really was the noise, you know, about disturbing the neighbours. I was worried about that, so. I know it was only one night, but in the morning I phoned my friend up and said, you need to take one of them back. I'll, I'll keep Andre, because obviously I saw he said I want him, but you need to take the other one back, because I can't handle them both together. I kind of regret that a little bit, because I perhaps, I could have probably had both of them, and they would have calmed down eventually, but it's okay. It is what it is, but I kept Andre and shortly after he moved in here, he actually broke out of the cage. He didn't want to be in the cage at all. And it was a it was like a more like a hamster cage really. But it was wooden, really strong wooden with metal bars and he bent the bars he bit through the wood and he bent the bars back and managed to get out which was really I don't know how he did it and it was really strange for the first few days the first week it's not having a new toy you know it's, I wanted to keep playing with him I wanted to keep picking him up and I wanted to pick him up and cuddle him and kiss him and you know just it was this wonderful little furry ball of love you know but he wasn't he was constantly biting me all the time every time I touched him he tried to bite me and he got away with it quite a lot I managed to hold him in a way that he wasn't able to get to me but it's still it took a week of holding him, well maybe two weeks, but a week before he stopped trying to bite me at every opportunity. And then after that, he just bite me occasionally, like whenever he felt like it. 
and then eventually he stopped. But it's as if he didn't want anything to do with me. He's, uh, it was interesting because he was so little, but he was so mischievous. He got into everything. He completely destroyed my settee. He ripped the carpet up in every part of the flat. He ripped the carpet up on the edges. Destroyed, he's ruined the carpet. He just basically did whatever he wanted to do. And I don't know how he got, he managed to get out places that he shouldn't have been able to get to, considering how little he was. And um, I did make some videos at the time where I was like filming him and I wish I still had those videos because it would be nice to have kept them but I'd, I've lost them along the way but there was one moment when probably in October so I probably had him for two or three weeks and I was just sitting here in my chair it might not be in this chair it might have been the old chair that I had but I'm watching television I've got a can of lager and I've got my dressing gown on so I must have maybe had a bath and I'm just, I've got the heating on so I've got my dressing gown on and I'm just relaxing and he climbs up my leg And this is one of the first time he's actually he ever done this, first time he ever did this. He used to climb up my leg to trying to bite me. But this time he didn't. He climbed up my leg. And he climbed onto the I had my arm the one that wasn't drinking, but not that my arm was drinking, but my left arm was just resting on the armrest. And he climbed up and he climbed up towards my arm, I thought he was going to talk by my hand, and he didn't. He climbed up my sleeve of my dressing gown, and he went to sleep. And that was the first time, really, that I felt close to him. And he was doing it quite. I mean, I remember for the rest of the night I mean he was sleeping there for a few hours I was getting up I had to go and get another can of lager from the fridge I needed to go to the toilet I was trying to do all that stuff at the same time trying not to disturb him because I felt so happy that he was finally trusting and felt close enough to me or comfortable with me to just fall asleep and allow himself to be vulnerable and from then on that that was I think for me that was the that was the change in our closeness that was when we really it went from there and he, he was doing it quite a lot he started climbing up my, my sleeves quite a lot. If climb into my top and go to sleep. So yeah, he's uh, it's one of the best things in a sense that's happened to me in my life. Having him just seeing him grow up, seeing him change into like a little adult, seeing how his behaviour has changed and you know, by season even. So recently he's been really jumping around and playing, really playful. 
other times of the year he, he doesn't want to do anything he just wants to be left alone just to relax and to do his own thing but the last two weeks he's been like biting me not hard just playfully on my ankle and then running away and looking back wanting me to chase him so it's uh, he does it when we go out for walks as well so he's got a lot of uh, he's got so much love inside him and he's just got a great personality he's a little munchkin he really is a little monkey but he's also so loving so gentle as well with me most of the time the only time he really bites me is when I'm playing with him and he likes to play rough so sometimes I get scratched and stuff but that's that's how we would play with another ferret they like they don't they don't play so softly they play quite rough I've got an itchy leg oh You know, it's something about having him in my life. There's a few things, a few benefits. Uh, one is I get to talk to strangers. Not that that's necessarily a good thing. I don't really want to. Not that I want to talk. <laughs> don't want to talk to strangers. But it's you know, let's say I go to the garage or. You know, people will stop and ask me questions about him, and maybe want to stroke him and stuff. And it's you know, get it. It feels nice sometimes that he's being given attention, and when people say how how pretty he is and how lovely he is, and you know, he's all that stuff. Just I like those compliments because. Although they're about him, it's just, I suppose as a parent, I kind of feel that, that sense of, well, it just feels nice, being his daddy and that. And I know that the way that I've raised him, he is probably a lot different from maybe other ferrets ferrets that have been raised because I've raised him he's a little bit of a, a little bit spoiled probably a lot spoiled and I have babied him quite a lot which probably hasn't done him any good if he ever ended up in a field on his own and you know had to fend for himself He'll be waiting there, waiting to be cuddled, and for someone to bring him some dinner. You know, that's uh, that's not much good for him. But my aim is that he'll never be in that situation. Also, I'm not going to try and make out that I take him out every single day, but it's fairly regular. There are the occasional days throughout the year where I don't, but I take him for a walk, even if it's just round the block. And I kind of come to the realization that it's not about taking him for a walk, it's he just wants to be outside. He loves being outside. He's happy to just lay down on the grass. He doesn't necessarily want to walk. Because he's not a dog. He doesn't need that. He doesn't need that um, long exercising walk. Although I think it's probably good for him. To get out and to build his muscles up. And it's good for me as well. To get some air and to walk about a bit. He 
it just seems strange that you know I've had him for nearly three years just seems a bit it just feels a bit strange that's all and I want to do something for his birthday I want to celebrate his birthday and but I don't know how I don't I don't know what what I can do for him it's not like I can buy him a pizza oh, when he was a baby when he was first moved here I used to get pizzas fairly often actually for a while and I wouldn't I wasn't always on my own I might have friends Ian as well and he'd just be jumping up and grabbing a whole slice of pizza and running off or if I had someone here he'd whatever they had on their plate he'd, he'd grab it and he'd run off and hide it you know or it's a chocolate bar even if it was still in its wrapper he'd grab it and run off and he'd stash stuff now had a clean up and he had stashes of you know, just everything was hidden away in big piles all around the place like underneath the settee or underneath the bed I don't know how he got underneath the bed but you know whatever he could get he could try and hide it he doesn't do it so much now with food as he did then when he was a baby because his brother used to get to the food before he did and used to eat it so he, he didn't get to eat as much as he wanted so when he came up here he went into that mode of stashing the food away for, for later in case he didn't get fed again not realising that I was going to be feeding him every day and he, do, he still hides some of the biscuits, some of the dry food in places but generally he doesn't do as much of the hiding of food as far as I'm aware anyway he's still got his little stashes, I know he has but not big stashes like he used to you know he's still got places like a, a carrier bag occasionally I'll like have a little tidy up and there'll be a carrier bag in the kitchen and there'll be little bits of biscuit and little bits of his dry food hidden there it's you know he never go, he's always got food available always I guess it's just the, the nature a bit of a a little bit of a squirrel, I think. He's a squirrely, squirrely ferret. So yeah, he's... I'm trying to think of some other stories. Oh. I think one funny story is I took him into town and I met up with a friend And basically Andre crouched down to do a wee. I thought he was going to do a wee. So I picked him up because I was going to move him to a different section. So just behind the wall so people couldn't see it. And he basically let it go all over me. All over my trousers, my, my shoes. I mean it's like he, I don't know where it all came from but it was all over me. And people were laughing, they were standing around laughing. I was absolutely covered in it on his wee. Even he was laughing. And I put him down and he started doing poos everywhere as well. It was just oh. and this big puddle. And I was just like, oh it was yeah, it was funny for him. Not for me. Another time we was in the park. And 
bearing in mind the information here is that for some reason he never likes water other than to drink if I take him for a walk he won't walk anywhere near a puddle you know he'll he'll do a, a 10 mile detour to avoid walking through a puddle he'll char a, a helicopter you know anything he can to avoid that puddle getting in a bath absolutely not his thing he really really doesn't like it but a couple of years ago I took him down the park went to the duck pond and he just jumped in jumped into the duck pond and started swimming so I was like oh, who can figure what's going on there <sighs> so yeah it's uh, I think that's the end of this session so I'm boring you by talking about Andre's life talking about well not his life but it's about time that I got him and that's it really there's nothing left to say it's all over now so I'm going to go thank you for listening thank you for allowing me to bore you to sleep and my website's got all my stuff on so it's jasonnewland.com you can listen to this recording on the website or on iTunes uh, where else Spreaker um, on my Facebook page Twitter um various others that I can't think of off the top of my head so it's on lots of different podcasts lots of different podcast hosts and I'm going to go so thank you for listening or watching if you're watching this on YouTube and I shall speak to you next time